This is the Mercedes AMG SLS, but it's not just any old SLS. This, my friends, is the SLS Black Series, though ironically, it's white. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the design. <coughs> Show you in the cabin. Analog dials, oh, it takes me back. Take it for a drive. See what's good about it. There ain't no replacement for a displacement. Hell yeah, boy! What's not so good about it? Oh, oh. And of course, poke it with a stick. Wait a minute. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and click that bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. Let's kick off this review by talking about the SLS's design because the key feature are these lovely Gullwing doors. I mean, look at them. They hark back to the old Gullwing from 50s. They're just glorious. If I own this car, I would always park it with the doors open because it's just a piece of art. And I'd employ a man or a woman or a non-binary person to stand guard next to it so that no one tries to steal it. And if it rains, I'll get two of them so they can hold tab hauling over it to stop the rain getting in. Let me show you with the doors down. It's still super cool looking. It's a bit of an arse having to walk all the way around to do it. Shame you can't do it on the key. That would have been cool. Look at it, it's super aggressive. Massive long bonnet, small little cabin, very racy. But this being the Black Series has some extra upgrades. You have a lower front splitter. This one's carbon fibre. There's bigger air intakes. The Black Series has a fully carbon bonnet with a scoop in it to help let hot air out. Now as we walk around, you've got bigger alloy wheels. Also, the wheel arches are wider at the front and at the back. You've got these carbon fibre side strakes here around the air intakes. Also, the sills are deeper and bigger as well on this Black Series to make it look more aggressive. We've got carbon fibre door caps. As we move to the back, this one is fitted with a fixed rear spoiler. That comes as part of the aerodynamic package, which also includes some little vents at the front for added downforce on the nose. You've also got some vents there, which help let hot air out from the exhaust. You've got a bigger rear diffuser. This is in carbon fiber as well. You've also got some smoked tail lights. This is a beautiful looking car. Click on the pop out banner up there to vote if you think there's a car that's more stunning than this. Yes or no, simple question. The SLS is a really distinctive car to sit in. So you sit super low, you've got this huge flat dash in front of you, a massive centre console to separate you from the passenger. It feels very, very wide, very, very sporty. You've got bespoke MG buttons here on the centre console and an AMG gear selector. I mean, it is very, very special feeling and quality is excellent throughout the place generally, apart from a couple of things I've noticed. This centre part of the steering wheel, some of the buttons here for the stereo and the mobile phone. Yeah, great, that's so old fashioned. And the rear view mirror is awful. Don't know why they do that. The dials, they're analog, just like the good old days. And they've been inspired by those in the 300 SL from 1954. Just like the gold windows. Yay, any old excuse to show them off, Matt? The SLS black version has some upgrades over the standard SLS. For instance, you get this 3D stitching effect on the dash. You also get Alcantara everywhere, and you could get a two-tone version of the Alcantara, so you'd have red inlays here and here. It also has these carbon bucket sport seats, which are absolutely blooming lovely to sit in. I love them. You also get a black series steering wheel, which is flat-bottomed and has that little marker so you know when your wheels are pointing dead ahead. You also get black series badging as well, and a special AMG button here which brings up some data on the infotainment screen so it has things like engine power and stuff like that and you can also do lap times for when you're on circuit and then download it through the USB system. You can try the infotainment system using this swivel wheel. Yes there is no touchscreen here people. The infotainment system itself is feeling a little bit old-fashioned so the navigation it's all right. It does have traffic alerts but really it's not very good. It's going to probably divert you into the nearest traffic jam to tell you the truth. And there's no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay play of course so you can't use google maps or ways look at this it's got video a dvd player how old-fashioned is that <laughs> it's starting to look a bit old this system so in terms of practicality you've got an all right glove box there there's a 12 volt socket there's your usb port place for your sunglasses there's a little storage net here so you could put your mobile phone in there like that under here there's another little storage area but actually it's got an insert for the key so if the starter button is no longer functioning you can start the car here i'll just do it there you go 
there's another key slot there which i think is probably to open the bonnet or the boot maybe something like that got a little pouch here for carrying some stuff some really cool little coat hooks that drop down from the roof under here there's your cup holders so they will hold a cup of coffee marvelous let's put that back finally i'll show you this little area for i don't know something and there's a 12 volt socket as well you might have noticed the carbon fiber here on the center console back here there's some on the doors as well that was available in this black series this particular car is also fitted with the upgraded 1000 watt bang and olison stereo which has 11 speakers including a huge subwoofer behind the driver and passenger seat fine let's move on to the driving position because oh what's that oh look it's a fire extinguisher which shows that this is designed to go on track now if you're really tall yeah there's plenty of leg room in this car if you need it decent headroom as well and you can move the steering wheel manually oh dear not electronically like in other mercedes but that's fine the driving position is great and i must point out i love these gear selector pedals solid aluminium mm, lovely finally let's talk about this car's boot because that's obviously really really important on a car such as this you have to open it here not on the spoiler because that's very expensive you don't want to break it it's not very big is it the low capacity is 176 litres this car's replacement the amg gtc its boot capacity is 350 litres so there yeah not going to be carrying much in there but apparently it's wide enough to fit some golf clubs in which is really really key now there are a few interesting things in here so there's no spare tire or even tire inflation but you do have look Ooh, this is oil in case the car needs an urgent drink there's the manual here and just underneath it is what looks like the router with the sim card there yeah that's how you get your internet connectivity for the car over the other side is the sort of toolkit so you've got your towing eye there and the bolt for the alloy wheels not the most useful boot and that brings you on to five annoying things about the mercedes sls black series while this car looks like it's got quad exhaust pipes these are just for show because the actual exhaust pipe is just a single one behind there there is another one on the other side but i think this might be where all of mercedes fakery did begin the black series version of the sls is super rare because only 150 were made and that makes them very very collectible and therefore very very expensive this car is valued at £750,000, so I better step away from the car. I'm a normal sized human being, and it is a bit of a reach for me to get to the door handle to close it. So, what happens if you're a proper little short ass? You're going to be like, oh, oh. Use the force, Matt. Reach out with your feelings. The reversing camera on this car is really low definition. You can hardly see anything in it at all. For some reason, the Black Series has 50 newton meters less torque than the normal SLS. What's going on, Mercedes? I want my torques back. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow, five core features. This fixed rear spoiler that you get as part of the aerodynamic package is adjustable, so you can change the angle between two and 10 degrees. And at 10 degrees, you get 50 kilos of downforce when you're going 120 miles an hour. The Black Series uses the same seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox as the normal SLS, and it's mounted towards the rear as well for improved weight distribution. However, it's slightly lower for improved center of gravity over the normal car, also, the black gets an electronically controlled limited slip differential rather than a normal limited slip differential because that gives you even better corner exiting traction. Plus, the final drive ratio is slightly lower for better acceleration. The Black Series has a number of weight saving measures over the normal SLS, so you get common ceramic brakes as standard, a titanium sports exhaust, there's those carbon fibre bucket seats, also a carbon fibre housing for the prop shaft rather than an aluminium one, and even the battery is no longer a lead acid battery, it's a lithium ion one because it's lighter, and all that adds up to a saving of 70 kilos. So this car tips the scales at 1.55 tonnes. Not bad. 
The adaptive suspension on the Black Series is about 50% stiffer than that on the normal SLS. Also, the car's track is around two centimeters wider as well, and all that helps improve the handling. The SLS uses a hand-built 6.2-litre naturally aspirated V8 and it's mounted quite far way back from the front axle for improved weight distribution. In this particular car, the Black Series, they've changed the valve train, done some other things to the internals as well and the air intakes and it's increased the rev limit from 7,200 RPM to 8,000 RPM. As a result, horsepower has increased by 60 to 630 horsepower, torque is 635 newton meters. So this engine is good for 196 miles an hour in this particular car, and it can do 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. All right, and let's see what this SLS Black is like to drive. Now, the last time I drove an SLS was for a video for Auto Express back in 2010. <laughs> I never got to drive the black, so this is a pretty special moment for me, and you're here to share it. I'll tell you what comes flooding back straight away is just how unsure you are of where the front of the car is, because you've got that massive long bonnet. It's as though you're looking through somebody's letterbox. It is quite intimidating at first, especially when you know how much this thing cost. I mean, back in the day, it was £230,000, which was £60,000 more than the normal SLS. This one though, oh gosh, got to be very careful. It's part of Mercedes heritage fleet. Now I've got the suspension in its softest setting, but you might hear the odd rattle. That's our camera setup vibrating because the suspension is firm. I'm not going to put it into the firmer setting, it's pointless. I've got the gearbox in comfort and it's all right, but I think I'll probably put it into manual. Let's have it in manual. Use the paddles now. And let's try this engine. First of all, the noise, people, the noise. Modern engines do not sound like that. They just don't. Oh my gosh. There are no turbos deadening the noise from the exhaust. That is amazing. The next thing that's amazing is the throttle response. You don't have to wait for boost pressure to build. It's just instant. Also, there's a better relationship between how much you move the throttle pedal and the amount of performance you get from the engine. Turbocharged engines, there's a delay and then they just give you a load of torque, which is a bit disconnected from what your right foot's doing. Whereas a naturally aspirated engine, it's more linear, it's more in tune with your body and your inputs, and that just makes it more fun. I'm sorry, I am definitely a naturally aspirated kind of guy. I really, really am. I love turbo power and I love turbo torque, but there is just that disconnect, which means they're not quite as fun, they're not quite as involving. Oh, this is involving. Oh my gosh. We're in town, so I suppose this is a good opportunity to try the maneuverability. Gotta go around a mini roundabout to head back to the nice road, so oh, come on. Come on, don't let me down. Oh, 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 oh. I can feel the diff kind of like just kind of locking up a little bit. Oh, it's a long bonnet. I've gone around. That was close, all right. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, the engine response is just lovely. And there's so many revs. I'm like short shifting <laughs> around five and a half thousand RPM. It's quite intimidating. And I'm forgetting that I've got another 3000 RPM to play with. Let's have a play with some of those extra RPMs. And I'll tell you what, I don't remember the old SLS feeling quite as sharp as this. So the front end is really, really responsive. I've noticed the back end feels really solid as well. On the normal SLS, it always seemed a little bit loose, a little bit nervous, whereas this, it's just planted. I can feel it moving about a bit as it's kind of losing a bit of traction then regaining it, but it never feels slightly loose. It's almost like it's working in harmony with the front, whereas in the normal SLS, it didn't quite so much. Oh yes, this is just so good. And it's so fast as well. <laughs> what a great car. Oh, this is such a special experience. <laughs> and such a special noise. Woo! Loving the pops and bangs on the overrun. All right, let's see if we can do a Yui here. I'm just using up all the good roads. Yes, what a thing. Whoa! The way it puts down its power is epic. 
<laughs> I just want to wring its neck. Oh, I've got to be careful because it's just so fast. The only thing that's maybe a bit too responsive are the brakes. The pedal is like an on-off switch. You just touch it and it's, it's braking hard. I definitely think carbon ceramic brakes have improved in the way that they just feel more gentle and natural when you're using them in normal driving. This is such a privilege. And you know what? I've got all you lot to thank for it, really, because if I didn't have all your views, I wouldn't have the ability to request cars such as this to drive, and it would just be me and you and uh, Ford Fiesta. So, yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for all your support. It means I can get to do this and share the experiences with you. <laughs> I think I need to calm down. I guess there is one last thing I really want to do in this car before I take it back. Now, it's not launch, it does have launch control, but I can't launch this car, not on the road. It's just not fair on it or my driving license. What I want to do is this. So if you just bear with me, I'm going to have to undo my seatbelt. Oh, come on, up you come. Come on. Right, yeah, I definitely got to do this because I is a baller in my SLS black. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I want to be outside the car to look at myself. <laughs> I can't wait to see the rushes of this. This is so cool. Just cruising along, taking it slow. Don't want to damage the doors. Hell yeah. That's the way I roll. So then, what's my final verdict on the Mercedes-AMG SLS Black Series? Well, I absolutely blooming love it. The only thing is, though, that while back in the day the SLS Black was worth the extra money over the normal SLS, today, unless you're a super wealthy car collector, you probably ain't going to be able to afford one of these because of the rarity. However, if you can afford a modern supercar, I would consider a normal SLS a used one because you can get them for about £150,000 and they will not depreciate and over time they will actually make you money. And of course they have the thing that really I love most of all about this Black Series, they have the same Gullwing doors. Love them. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe to this channel for more videos and if you click on the deals box to the right you can see how much you can save on a new car at carwow or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos